as the economic crisis continues to unfold, it's, well, it's going to take some time. And there are certain key indicators that I think will show you how things are going and where they are going. One of my favorites is what we call the velocity of money. Now, the U.S. dollar is just a currency, and the net value of it depends a lot on, well, how many times it turns over in an economy. You want a dollar that moves through and basically I pay you, you pay them, somebody else, and everybody benefits from it. That's a very dynamic economy. This has been collapsing for quite some time, and I want to explain. The velocity of money, as we define it, is nothing more nor less than the total gross domestic product, the size of the economy, divided by the total money supply. Now, the economy grows every year, the money supply grows every year. If the two are in balance, it should stay pretty much even. It hasn't. It never does. But if it goes up and down with some regularity or some predictability, we can get a gauge of the overall health for it. There are some problems with this. The first is, what is the money supplied? What are you looking at? For the purposes of velocity, I like to look at MZM or money at zero maturity. This is a total value of all of the cash that's ready to be spent one way or the other. It, it takes out things that might be considered investments or things that are tied up in, in various uh, loans or whatever. So it's a definition of money that is essentially in cash or in bank accounts, ready to go. It can be spent at any time. Now, if you look at MZM over uh, the velocity of MZM over time, you will see that through the 1980s and 90s, it varied between 2.8 and 2.3. What does that number mean? Well, it means that every single dollar turns over that many times per year in the economy. So we have a figure of uh, somewhat between four and a half to six, uh, to four and a half, five months. That was a very healthy economy. It was the last time we saw one. Just before we entered this, at the end of 2019, it was at 1.4, and it had been there for a long time. There was, uh, when we entered the 2001 financial crisis, if you'll remember, that was the first of the three that we've had in the last 20 years. We were at the 2.3 or whatever, but velocity has never fully recovered, no matter what we do. And if you look at it in terms of the first quarter of 2020, there was a sickening plunge down to 1.2. That was before all of this printing took place. I fully expect it's going to be well below 1, roughly about 0 0.8 to 0 0.9 very, very shortly. Now, what does this all mean? Well, what it means is that for every dollar that was spent to stimulate the economy with a great Keynesian stimulus in the first crisis, 2001, after 9-11, it's going to only have about half as much effect today. We need to prime the pump even harder all the time. And if it does indeed fall where I think it's going to fall, it's going to be like three times. In other words, this is just not going as, uh, as well as it should be. Another way of looking at it is that the economy is significantly less dynamic than it used to be. Money is just not turning over. For all of the great technology and so on, money is just not moving through. Now, in the 1960s, it was only around two or even a little bit less. But the more dynamic things got through the 70s and 80s, it grew. And that was the great benefit that we saw to what? Yes, the benefit didn't necessarily accrue to workers. And that's another thing that velocity is, is in many ways, it's an indication of the income distribution problem that we have in this country, which is to say that money at the top doesn't necessarily get spent as quickly. Uh, for example, if uh, you get paid bi-weekly and you live paycheck to paycheck, your personal velocity is 26, much bigger number. So... For all of the people who are just, you know, spending money as rapidly as they get it to survive uh, versus the people at the top, it comes out that 
money as we know it is turning over sometime something around once per year and in the eurozone we don't have as regular of a figures but it's been less than one for a few years now so money basically has less effect for all of the technology for all of the things going on the economy itself is significantly less dynamic than it was 20 years ago now this is best shown in a graph, and I debated back and forth. Should I just put up a graph like anyone else did? For the purposes of this, I want to have a little discussion. Basically, I'm just talking with you like we might be meeting in a bar or whatever. I don't want to throw up a lot of graphs. Uh, I want you to take everything I say as just some guy talking to you and do your own research. But I will put up a link to the Federal Reserve's Economic Database, or FRED, a service provided by the St. Louis Federal Reserve, and a graph of MZM, uh, MZMV rather. Uh, if you like data and graphs, or you like uh, economic data, you're going to love this place. If you like both, you're going to be ecstatic. If you like neither, well, I, I hope you can appreciate that good economic data is vital to a functioning democratic republic, okay? But this information is all available. And by the way, policymakers have known about this, all the way through. The fact that our economy is getting less dynamic all the time has been very well known. And what to do about it is, frankly, the obvious question. Now, we can see that this is only going to continue to go down, but how far will it go down? And how will it relate to uh, economies of the past? Remember, we came into this at about 1.4, and we're probably going to cut that in half very, very shortly at the rate we're printing money. What is the bottom for MZMV? I don't really know, but it's something that I think is worth keeping an eye on. And I'll send you the link so that you can make your own decisions and you can keep an eye on it as well. The economy itself has many different measures, but the rate at which a single dollar turns over is one of the most important. It's going to crash. The question is where it goes. Now, we've seen this in Europe for a long time, that it's been below one. Oh, and by the way, uh, China, the king of debt, the velocity of money there is about 0 0.5. They have a very high savings rate, they have other issues, but this is the, a measure of brittleness, essentially. The more dynamic an economy is, the more it can rebound. And ours is becoming more brittle with time as things break. That's why I'm concerned about the dollar itself. We've been printing a lot of it for 20 years, and you can see that in the fact that it's just not circulating as rapidly as it used to. The velocity of money is an important concept, and it's worth keeping an eye on to see how things are going. Thank you.